All right, let's have a chat about these things called SSL certificates. Imagine you're sending a letter through the post. You want to make sure it gets to the right person and that nobody else can read it. That's kind of what an SSL certificate does. But this is for information you send over the internet. Now, you might have noticed a little padlock symbol or a green bar in your web browser when you visit certain websites. That's an SSL certificate at work. It means the website you're visiting is using a secure way of sending information, kind of like a special delivery service for your letter. You see, when you visit a website, you're actually sending information back and forth over the internet. The standard way of doing this is like sending a regular letter in the mail, it gets there, but anyone who gets their hands on it can read it. An SSL certificate is like putting that letter in a locked box and sending it off. The box can only be opened by the person you're sending it to, which keeps the information inside private and secure. This lock is what we call encryption and it's done using a pair of keys. One key is public and anyone can see it, just like your mailbox. The other is private, like the key to the mailbox. The SSL certificate is like a declaration that says this is the correct mailbox and here's proof that it's genuine. It keeps people from pretending to be someone else. Now, you may hear people talk about SSL and TLS. They're just different versions of the same delivery service, but TLS is the newer and more secure one. Even so, we still use the term SSL because it's stuck around. The SSL certificate itself is kind of like an ID card for a website. It tells you about the website, who owns it, and who can vouch for it. All this information is put into a special file. To most people, it looks like a bunch of random characters, but computers can read it and understand it. So, in short, SSL certificates are like ID cards for websites that let your computer send private, secure information over the internet. They're super important for keeping your information safe online. Let's look at how this is implemented for internet web browsing. When people see a padlock or a green bar in their web browser, it's typically an SSL certificate at work. This symbol signifies the use of HTTPS for secure communication on the web page. At its core, HTTP is the standard way to communicate on the web. But HTTPS, with the S standing for secure, provides a secure variant of it. You might have noticed that URLs occasionally start with HTTP and at other times with HTTPS. The secure communication we refer to is all about preserving data privacy and integrity, ensuring no one can eavesdrop on or tamper with our data while it's being transmitted. So, what does a certificate certify? It verifies the ownership of a public key. We'll delve into the role of public keys in cryptography later. For the moment, understand that this certification of public key ownership is crucial for encrypting data transmitted between a browser and a server, helping us to maintain data privacy and integrity through encryption. SSL, standing for Secure Sockets Layer, is simply a communication protocol. Initially, this protocol was used along with the certificate and public key for HTTPS communication. But around 1999, TLS or Transport Layer Security, a new and improved protocol, was introduced. This protocol has become more prevalent than SSL and the choice of protocol doesn't impact the certificate, which simply certifies the public key. Despite the dominance of TLS, the term SSL has lingered. Even though TLS has been around much longer than SSL and is the protocol predominantly in use, we still refer to them as SSL certificates. You may find these certificates referred to by a variety of names including SSL, TLS certificates, TLS certificates, digital certificates, public key certificates, or identity certificates. All these names are interchangeable with SSL certificates being the most commonly used term. It's important to recognize and understand these various names. So so what exactly is in an SSL certificate? As it verifies public key ownership, it includes details about the owner. This information consists of the organization's name, URL, state, country, certificate's validity period, and the issuer validating the ownership of the public key. This information, along with some technical specifics such as the type of encryption used, is stored in a certificate file, usually ending in CRT or SIR. Opening this file, you'd find an encoded version of this information, which can be decoded with specific tools or websites. To wrap up, as 
SSL certificate's primary function is encryption, facilitating secure communication between two computers, typically a browser and a server. They also provide information about the identity of the public keys owner and their trustworthiness. Issues related to identity and trustworthiness can occur, and we'll discuss them in more depth later. The most significant function, however, is the use of this key for data encryption. In the following section, we'll discuss how this secure, encrypted communication functions in greater detail.